Japonský z pokladní se tak celou prvou věru, kdyby to zvládnete tež. Moc mi pomůžete a když na začátek mě otázku chci napíšet ty koli, nebo Rick, nebo O'Neill, nebo jak je to moje kůta, doma říkáte, že se to pak bude líp jako vyznávat. Otázky můžete česky i anglicky, akorát vás poprosím o kolikrát, protože bych to ještě trošku dala do jedné, já vidím jenom jeden řádek, jo. A mě jenom je to zajímavá část, tak to mám jim to nezajímavá. A co je všechno, všechno dovedně. A pro delší dotazy, tady pak máme připravený mikrofon, na který se vrhneme v druhý půlce. A i tam můžete se ptát česky, nějak se s tím vrhneme. Je mi prosím vás jenom jedna otázka na člověka, ačkoliv chápu, že je hrozně těžký se vybrat na to, co se jich zeptat, věřte, že vám opravdu rozumí. A když jsme se vybrali do tlumočení, tak si můžete rychle poslat čaku pro sluchátka s tlumočením na dostávku v Nerčem. A ti z vás jsou všem a jak si je zatknou, protože přepínáme do angličtiny a začínáme. Please, if you're born as welcome to the greatest heroes of your childhood afternoons, Corinna Nemec and Richard Dean Anderson. Simple as that. That's how it came. 
past, it was like a, a dream for me to come true, to be involved with some Cincinnati. I thought it was some kind of a bar to you, like you had to get to him in this role on Stargate, and then he would get you your episode. Lascivious? <laughs> That's not the right word, but um, no, it was just sitting around at lunch. He and his wife had uh, spec uh, written an episode, um, including MacGyver. Well, I was wondering, because if you still like Simpsons and watch them from time to time, do you watch this episode as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And have you like, watched it with your, with your daughter? That must have been so cool to just see her like, this is my best work, you know? <laughs> She may have seen it on her own, I'm not real sure, but she's been very hesitant to uh, uh, sit down and watch anything I've done. <laughs> she's, she's pursuing um, a life and a career in the business um, as well. She's writing, directing, acting, and, and um, some films of her own and uh, some that she's been hired to do. So she's, she's got that kid competitiveness where like dad's already got a legacy going, a, a whole career and now he's retired and it's boring. <laughs> so I don't want to be around him anymore. But uh, uh, yeah, so the reports are high. I think she's proud. She's very happy that I got to come here. Did really? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, she was, well, first of all, she was happy that I got out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Did something, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, she's. Is I'm interested in. I, I don't let me ramble. You especially don't let me ramble. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm interested in politics and culture, and, and there's a lot of both right in this general vicinity of Europe. Yeah, especially around here, yeah. That kind of you know, gives me away for the next question, because it was not so weird that we would get a uh, Korean here, because we are quite used to having Germans in the story of the And it yeah. means German. Actually, it doesn't. It does. the, the, I'm sorry to, to break that to you, but you're pronouncing it wrong. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this island, they said, listen, <laughs> the simple way of saying it is the way it's going to be pronounced from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what's the story behind it? Do you have some kind of like Czech roots or German roots? Was no, I get back to my, my, my uh, great great grandfather, Joseph Nemitz Sr., used to live here in Prague. And Joseph, he moved, he Joseph moved. Nemitz is the right word. I'm sorry. I was Joseph Charles Nemitz IV. It's not boring. <laughs> it, oh, Joseph, yes. It will possibly be that Josef Jiří Němec. That's very easy. Josef Jiří Němec. Very easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, he, he, moved, uh, he, he moved from Prague uh, in, the, in, the, in the 1920s, uh, in the mid, mid to late 20s, mm -hmm. uh, and moved to, to the United States with uh, most of the family, his brother, his sister, and all that. But the, 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 you can also put quite some of, of European roots. Like, I've heard that you're like of Norwegian, Scottish, Finnish, Swedish, English, German, and possibly Mohawk descent. <laughs> uh, Mohawk, yeah. Um, yeah, those all sound familiar. <laughs> I have some ancestors that didn't mind crossing borders to get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's quite a mix. I, I have no idea. They can't defend their behavior. <laughs> but it was outrageous. Now, I think we all understand you because we speak to the public and we are in the heart of Europe. Uh, we are genetically exactly this, like a mix of, of all the nations around us. And not about all of yeah, you don't have to go too far to be out of the country. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it would be a distance of regular, you know, if you go in, in a bigger American city from one side to another, yeah, you, you are leaving uh, Czech Republic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, maybe we should get to, to Stargate, actually, because I guess there are some Stargate fans here. <laughs> Remember anything 
thing from, from the shoe. Yes. <laughs> right, it's been like 20 years or something. Uh, so if, if there's any point in asking you any questions <laughs> like about your memories or specific episodes and stunts and, and whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it wasn't. Well, I just found out today that he's about a quarter century younger than I am. <laughs> so he would have a better memory than I ever had. <laughs> but, uh, and trust me, the older you get, the less you'll remember. It's wonderful. The less you care about it as well. It does sound good. Oh, it gets blissful sometimes. <laughs> like you forget all the bad stuff. You mean. No, that's a stuff. That's a good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like character building stuff. I guess. Yeah, if you don't get arrested for it. <laughs> well, you know. Well, you've both been in one hundred and seventy-seven and thirty-one episodes, respectively. Is there any one that really stands out for you, that, that's the most memorable for you? Or was that a different story? Um, 
Well, I had to go through a violent beating. <laughs> which we should finish. <laughs> I escaped. Uh, no, it was, it, it was great. Everybody was really, really welcoming. Uh, and I think that the writers did a, a, a really um, warm, an average, a really average job introducing your guy. I think they did a, a really good job slowly letting the character join the team versus just kind of shoving the character down the throat of the fans and, and forcing them to like the character. Because I know that there was uh, quite a backlash, of course, when uh, when uh, Michael Shanks left the show and I came on. Uh, but um, but I mean, for me, it was it was really great. I had a, I mean, working with Richard is, is awesome. You can tell that he's got he's got quite the, the, the sense of humor. And, you know, sometimes you're like, I'm not sure if he's serious or is he joking right now. Should I laugh or should I? What should I do here? So it's very much like the, the character, actually, that both the character. Did character. Didn't you make up half the dialogue that you said? <laughs> yeah, it was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> there, really, there is a story behind um, the problems that I have in life, which is that I like to improvise. Well, I grew up in improv theater. So when we first started the show, I would, during table reads, which <laughs> don't exist anymore. Um, I would just ad lib, you know, I get the idea of a scene and ad lib responses. And if you all noticed, um, uh, Amanda had all the technical dialogue, in great part because I couldn't learn that stuff. <laughs> no idea. But, uh, uh, where was. You're talking about that yeah. improv yeah. improvisation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Brad White, our head writer and executive producer, um, finally took me aside because it was disruptive. And in retrospect, I realized that. And he didn't so much read me the riot act, he kind of just alerted me to uh, how disrespectful he felt I was being toward the writers. And it was at that moment that I really did. Um, a little light bulb and after being dormant for so many decades that, uh, yeah, show respect for <laughs> your other artists or your, um, uh, your work partners. And so I started reading their, you know, dull boy dialogue. <laughs> um, yeah, it just became a, more of a collaborative uh, effort than a selfish indulgence on um, Oh, I do recall being on set a, a, a lot of the time, and then we'd be doing the rehearsal and everything, and, and he'd be over there with the script, and he'd just be going, no, I'm not going to say that. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I guarantee you, it made the scene better. It made it, it, made it flow faster and, and brought more comedy. Yeah, I heard that there, even at some time, there was just written, the, whatever Rick says. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brad is okay. joking. I'm sure. No, it was fun. They, everybody seemed to accommodate my, again, selfish, selfish indulgence. And um, so, you know, sparingly, I would throw some stuff in, but um, the name of the game or the job was to get the story told. Well, you were, because you were committed, you were committed to the show quite early on, like when, when they were still developing it based on the, on the movie. And you kind of inherited the role uh, after Kurt Russell who played it uh, in the in the movie. But I heard that you requested a few changes to be made to that character. Do you remember it? Well, I mean, out of necessity, there's no way I could make my hair do what Kurt Russell's doing. <laughs> remember that? The, the white flat top. That's why not. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, speaking of uh, Kurt Russell, <laughs> no, he, he, he actually he was shooting something having to do with Elvis Presley, uh, some movie he was doing on set up in Vancouver, and he came over to our our set and uh, say hi and. Um, took me aside and just you know, thanked me 
and he was very complimentary to uh, what we had done with the franchise, kind of created this whole thing. And um, and he said, <laughs> he said, I really wish I had had the freedom you have um, with the character, because it was pretty rigidly drawn as it was in the movie. And I can't behave that way. But anyway, we became close friends and had two children. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the, those were basically uh, two characters that were, that were added uh, to the show. Uh, kind of, because you requested the, the SG-1 would be more of an ensemble show rather than the guide where you, where you have to learn all the dialogue and, and carry on the whole show. So maybe I think that, that you are the one that we should thank for creating Samantha and... and no, no, no. I mean, no, I didn't create them. I just... Um, I was an actor for hire at that point, but yeah. when I, I signed on to do it, then I became part of the process of casting. My word wasn't the final word by any stretch of imagination. It was, uh, um, eventually became an executive producer, but that just meant more work and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think they had just um, constructed the, the outline the show with those two characters in mind. Mm -hmm. And Teal is, you know, an obvious, what's the word, where it, he represents the alien culture uh, in flux or in transition. He was going from bad guy mm -hmm. to, you know, Teal. <laughs> <laughs> about you sometimes maybe getting a bit bored uh, on the set like in between in between takes and then you would play with a lot of stuff did you have any, any favorite toy uh, on the set that you would play with is there an answer there that you <laughs> <laughs> it's like i didn't have any good there uh, are there children here <laughs> can i be a little uh, yeah <laughs> Well, you know, you, you know that Zap gun. Yeah. It's an it's an obvious. I mean, it always embarrassed me. I never. I don't think I was ever seen shooting that thing. In great part because I objected to what it looked like. Did anybody see a close up of that Zap gun? It's a penis. It's, and it and it jumps out. Like that? <laughs> 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 so that was your favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, now I have a few questions for Corey, and I thought that you might actually get bored, so we've got some choice for you. Venus? Uh, <laughs> Uh, is it Chinese? Is it Chinese? Is it Chinese? Is it Chinese? Is it Mustard, though. <laughs> 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 bright yellow mustard. That's sort of an off grayish 
mustard. It's not going to have the same effect. You know, I'm very old. What if I didn't remember what this was all about? <laughs> <laughs> well, in his, in his years of service as a member of Stadia SG1, Jonas was always like quick to make decisions in favor of the whole team and, and prepare himself for every mission. And, and you know, he, he learned all of the uh, all of the notes that Daniel left. And uh, his eagerness sometimes surpassed and maybe even annoyed the rest of the, the rest of the team. Uh, was was that the same case with the set? Uh, with, with the crew, like, were you too, too, too eager, or were you trying to fit in, watch, watch oh, all of this fire With my props, house. baby. We might use the props. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was answering, <laughs> did my eagerness, uh, did my eagerness from, the, from playing the character trans, transfer in my acting on the set, I said, maybe my use of props, my introduction of props to the scenes, and food and such. I was, I was, I was banned. Halfway, because half, of that one scene we did in the in the SGC where I was peeling the orange, I was peeling that orange in the background. And every time they cut the wide shot, all you could look at was in this damn orange in the background. I'm saving everybody, and I got called to the side after that one. And they were like, it, it, no, "No more props for you unless it's scripted. You can't do it." <laughs> so a lot of you, so you'll see, you'll see the, the character kind of. The eating and the drinking and all that phases out about halfway through the season, and then it's just sort of here and there when it's scripted in, uh, because I, I over introduced the character choice. <laughs> well, and Jonas also had this ability you know, to learn everything, this amazing memory. Is that the same case with you, or, or do you have some special trick for remembering lines? Um, reverse, <laughs> reverse, reverse, reverse. Uh, I know I've been, I mean, I've, been, I've been acting since I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. uh, and besides acting professionally, it was in, in theater companies or workshops all the way up until my, my mid to late 30s. Uh, so the memorization process isn't, isn't really as, as difficult for me as, you know, because I've been doing it for so long, it's, it's, it's a somewhat second nature. And uh, there's techniques to it, you know, there's, there's memorization techniques that are, that make it, very easy, thing, you know, to, to figure out. Uh, so obviously, still, Amanda Tapping uh, had the majority of the techno battle. Thank goodness, because I also don't really like that. But I asked her. I actually asked her one time. I said, "How do you?" Because for me, sometimes I got you know, it, you, you really have to understand what we're talking about. But I had, I had asked her how she goes about memorizing it uh, so easily and fluidly, and she said, "Well, she actually looks it all up." And she understands, so, so she, she researches everything that she's talking about to make sure she understands what it is that she's saying instead of just memorizing the dialogue. And, and I was like, oh, well, that's, uh, that is dedication. Um, I, do, so I do a similar thing myself as well, but, but, uh, but I was very impressed by that. And, and, it, and it makes sense now because when we're doing the scenes, you, they, I, I watched other shows, um, you know, I, I can't think of a comparison where I don't have but I've watched other shows where people have a lot of, that is impressive. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a Halloween one. Um, oh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 we have to come up here and, uh, <laughs> but I was very, I was very impressed with it. <laughs> and, then, and then obviously, uh, Chris Judge had, like, zero dialogue. Uh, and he was the luckiest. I think that there was one episode that I did with him where I think he had like three lines of dialogue and one of them was an ug or something. Uh, the other one was like indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's an indeed in every episode. Um, but, uh, but, but Chris is great. The, the, only, uh, the, only, the only issue I had with Chris uh, that I learned early on was, was during rehearsal, don't position myself anywhere behind him. Um, because he has a, he had a, a case of flatulence that would not go away. And I think that, I mean, I, I, actually, I think that he just saved it all for on set. <laughs> he was off set that he, he, he never ripped one ever. And when he was on set, that was his, 
But what you would do is you would wait just before they said action. So they'd be like, you know, roll sound, roll camera. Then you go, action. So you'd be like, I think it's like classical Jaffa humor, I guess. I guess so. If I had a symbiote in me, I'd probably be a little upset too. Well, thank you so much. I, I think I need to show uh, yes. this wonderful art. that I had done besides 
maybe the miniseries The Stand with Stephen King, that's about the only project that I had worked on that might be something that is, that is of interest at, at many of the conventions because of the type of genre that these, that these conventions do. But, but to make a long story short, I, I, uh, for me, um, it, it's all the incredible travel that I've, I've gotten to do uh, because, of the, the, the conven because of the show itself, going to these conventions all over the world. I mean, I've been to Australia, Australia is rare, I've been to Australia like, like 20 times, I've been to New Zealand like six times, and been uh, all over Europe and in France a dozen, a dozen or more times, and Germany and Belgium and here now, and uh, I, you know, so it's it's really really amazing just the reach and the longevity that the show has had, and uh, and how even now, uh, 15 years later, having you know from being on the show, that we're still here, you know, having a chat. 15 years for me, not. <laughs> they, they, they kept adding seasons. What's up, it's gone. What? 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 Dang it. Um, <laughs> uh, Bob 
possibly. I, I don't recall that part. I mean, because I always loved working with Michael. I just, I think it, they were just words and characters talking and you get a cut. It was called, uh, we were back to laughing or doing you know, something else. Um, but I, I honestly don't re remember O'Neill being, you know, icky <laughs> towards, uh, anybody else remember that or no? Just me? Where am I? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I'm too 
asked about uh, the famous Jeffa Cree. The green, the green means what? Well, it's something you get after college. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. <laughs>
years of therapy, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and and Rick, did, did you get anything, any, any memorabilia uh, after shooting? Yes. Do <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you care to give us an example? My dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take anything. Um, oh, I, actually, that's not true. I took many um, pairs of boots. Because <laughs> they were all custom made, of course, off the shelf. <laughs> um, but no, we had several different, we had the desert boot, um, which was this color, um, the, uh, the regular black boots, it took about three pairs of those, <laughs> and um, the white boots, I don't know, even, I wear the white yeah, the white boot for the Arctic, I took a couple pairs of those, and they're very popular these days, big white military boots. Kids wearing a lot. It's so not true. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a walking embarrassment to my dogs. So. <laughs> Don't cry, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I just can't imagine having you as a father and being embarrassed of you, but I guess it, it depends on the it's, it's in your DNA somehow. Oh, yeah, you were never a daughter. Then. <laughs> what? Well, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, kids. <laughs> oh, we have some kids at the microphone. Oh. A little bit grown up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, talking about the question, because I have a question about the topic. As a general meal, you usually get a soldier uniform. And as a MacGyver, if you have this uh, famous leather jacket, or another shirt. So I just want to ask you, Mr. Anderson, when did you buy these sweatpants? <laughs> Great question. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> these ones that I'm wearing. Yeah. Well. Um. <laughs> Great. 
get from Shanti in this play, plus the corner in, from the green guys you expect in the show. What? <laughs> 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 You got the gist. Your English is wonderful. Okay. <laughs> no, it's it's very legible. <laughs> um, but that was a great honor for me. The the Air Force bestowed upon me an honorary uh, general. Was it or honorary something? Brigadier General, I think. Yes. Two thousand, two thousand one that one there. You know. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, Brigadier General. And um, they flew me out to Washington, D.C., and it was a big ceremony. It wasn't just for me, mind you. I was kind of like like the warm-up show. <laughs> yeah, special guest, very nice. Hey, stay close. <laughs> You're helping me enormously. But they were also honoring some real um, generals and, and personnel from uh, the Air Force, giving them real... Uh, well, honor. Um, but I, I was very humbled by the by the gesture. Um, and in meeting uh, uh, General George Jumper, is his name, and, uh, he was our he was our biggest supporter out of the Air Force. Uh, he like approved of our use of of airplanes and cops and um, submarines. Submarines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that had more to do with it than me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but he came out and visited us in uh, Vancouver and I got to chat with him a little bit and I asked him if, because I was still a colonel at that point. <laughs> oh, I miss those <laughs> but uh, I got to ask, I, I asked him honestly, I said, I, tell me, if, are you okay with the way uh, I'm portraying a colonel in the Air Force? And uh, if I'm, is there anything I'm doing wrong? I'm, just, I'm, I want to be respectful to the Air Force. And, you know, O'Neill was a bit of a life liar, or call. <laughs> Um, screw up. <laughs> but um, he stopped me in mid sentence and said, Richard, you're doing great. Keep it up. I've got general or I've got colonels like you and worse. <laughs> <laughs> Answer out of Brad Wright, who's 
Um, obviously not. <laughs> but, um, uh, he's kind of in charge of all this. He's our executive producer, head writer. Um, and I asked him, you know, what's the future? What's going on with you guys? He said, it's up to MGM. Um, uh, he'd given some thought to um, getting a, a, a fan base push to get something, in, but I think that kind of petered out a little bit. Um, would I be involved in it? Wow. <laughs> if they asked you. Oh, if they asked you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'd rather do it not be an Just show up one day. Do a solo act. <laughs> um, I I honestly don't have an answer for that. Um, maybe. Maybe. I'm so well. I'm old for one thing. Let's get that established. Have I mentioned? <laughs> and um, and you know things hurt and I'm lazy. <laughs> well, maybe the fans like pushed enough. Yeah, would you be able? Would you be willing to push? <laughs>
our story is, I think yesterday, of um, this a gentleman in, I believe it was Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the States, and he was going to have a tattoo put on uh, his leg of my name. My name's about four feet long. <laughs> so he had me write it in a pen on his rather corpulent leg. <laughs> Anybody know corpulent? <laughs> Improper word? That was fat. He had a fat leg. <laughs> and I had to somehow write my name in it. So next time I see him, because now we're close personal friends. <laughs> He's just going to have a tattoo of me. Well, Richard Bean. Yeah. <laughs> 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 photo. Yeah. Started on the calf and ended up on his butt. That's <laughs> not true, but it's not true. Uh, well, I hope you're, you enjoy your photo shoot. What I love to know is that at the very first photo and at the very last photo that you did yesterday, you were you were smiling. You know, it has seen or seen at least a sincere way. How do you do that? Do you have like a special regeneration chamber or, or some special pills? You can download You are still smiling at people at the very end. I'm a happy guy. Severely depressed, but happy. <laughs> 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 that keeps smiling at you. It's a pain in the butt, you know. <laughs> Well, yesterday we, we talked mostly about uh, Stargate, because we have also uh, Corey here. Uh, today, I guess we can attend to another iconic role of yours, uh, which was a certain guy called Angus McGyver. Uh, do I believe correctly that you were actually the one who invented his first name? Well, I think the name existed before it didn't quite invent it. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it, the story goes, and it's very boring, but I was at, we didn't have a first name for him uh, through all the years that we had been doing the show, and I went to an event in Vancouver in, in the big uh, arena that they have hockey games in, and I think it was a hockey game, but on the board um, that lit up, they were promoting something about something, some governmental thing uh, that had uh, that was starring the mayor of the town of Vancouver. His name was Angus O'Connell, or Angus, his last name, and I just it just burned out. Of it etched itself in my brain, and I just, that's it. <laughs> it goes with MacGyver, which is Scots Irish. <laughs> diplomatic about that. But um, yeah, it's, it's, see, I told you it was boring. Oh, <laughs> stick with me on this. <laughs> MacGyver was quite big here, uh, possibly because we are quite a, a nation of MacGyvers. You know, we like to fix things on our own, we're not paying anyone to do that. But there's an internationally successful cartoon about two MacGyvers, but instead of Mac, they are called Pat and Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I will find you somewhere in... There's a cartoon. There's a cartoon about two sort of MacGyvers. Uh, I will find you to get to And they go through life together? Yeah, yeah. They, they live in adjacent houses and... Fixing things. MacGyvering things. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have no sex life whatsoever. <laughs> There's time between all of the MacGyvery. Well, they, yeah, they're not MacGyvery, they have sex <laughs> well, there were like a, a million episodes of MacGyvery. Is there anyone that, that still stands 
sound escaping your memory. Nope. <laughs> um, no, well, that era of my life slash career is fading from my memory. Uh, only because I'm old, that's all. Um, if motivated, I can recall. Um, there was no tragedy or any. I mean, I broke my back and three fingers and dislocated a kneecap. <laughs> Bunch of other incidents um, that alter the course of my life to this day. Those were scripted, or that was you? You improvised. Oh, I wish they were scripted. <laughs> <laughs> the insurance company would be a lot happier too. Uh, no, I can. I think overall, the fact that they would let me do as many stunts as I could sneak into doing. I had a great relationship with the uh, uh, stunt coordinator. And because the company didn't want me to do anything except, you know, be the famous guy. And, uh, but I was, at that point in life, uh, fairly athletic and healthy and vital and misbehaving and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so I, I started to insist later on on doing some of the, the stunts. In retrospect, any of you pursuing, you know, being the third MacGyver, <laughs> don't do your own stunts. Just <laughs> let them do their job. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got to do my own skiing and some of my motorcycle, the riding that took place in there, swinging from ropes and all that kind of dumb kid stuff. <laughs> But uh, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess people remember those episodes by the gadgets that, that MacGyver actually made. Like, you, you would remember the one with the, with the plane with, uh, from the duct tape, or the, the one with the, uh, with the ant. But there was this one episode that I guess no one ever asked you before. It's called For Love or Money. And uh, uh, MacGyver is supposed there to, to go and uh, rescue a political prisoner. Spring him from psychiatric prison in Czechoslovakia. So his name is Anton Dukček, which is a typical Czech name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the plot is that he, he, he goes with this other female undercover agent for a honeymoon, like famous honeymoon, to communistic Czechoslovakia to do this secret mission. And uh, I was wondering, like, any nice memories from Czechoslovakia back then? <laughs> It looked a lot like Los Angeles. For us, I think it was a blast because this was like 1995, 1996 when it was shown here. And, and to see, you know, this big American show, and there would be Czech, Czech uh, letterings, like there would be this oxygen, it would be called Kisli, that was a glass. And not just because the guy who made it, you know, explode, as he usually did. But that, that was a good thing for us, I guess. Were there any naughty words that they accidentally... Because the, didn't you just have a drawing here, prior to my arrival, uh, for... Um, <laughs> Oh, so the two guys are three people, one box is full of mm -hmm. Legos. Mm -hmm. Were any of you here for that? Yeah. No. I have no idea what I was going to say about that. But... Yeah, one of them had a funny name, I was Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah uh, that's, I was always wonder when I see foreign to us foreign. Us meaning Americans. <laughs> um, it's seeing that I'm more curious about the signage you see in any any show, whether it's you know sending secret uh, messages across the universe or, or back home. Oh yeah, this wasn't actually in Stargate Atlantis. 
Uh, there was a certain actor who was called David Nickel, uh, and he had like Czech ancestry, and he his character was Czech, and he was cursing in Czech the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> and I think yeah, there's 10 million people in the world who hugely appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> For a little bit back to my grammar, was there any real life situation that you've solved with a duct tape and was anyone around to see it? In real life? In real life, yeah. Uh, duct tape, mm, <laughs> but um, you know what, it, it, I, I was like this um, before assuming that role. Um, my dad was very uh, conservatively minded. He, wouldn't, he was not a conservative. Uh, he was progressive. Let's use that word. But um, as I grew up, he would always kind of show me a way if we didn't have a hammer, you know, that he used my head or, you know, <laughs> a rock or something. And uh, so I kind of grew up and still do maintain a bit of a uh, mostly in my head these days, um, <laughs> of figuring things out or uh, listening a lot. That's the, the crossover is I listen a lot to um, conversations and stuff around me in anticipation of having to either interject or remind you know, someone uh, of a point they may have made in conversation where now they were backtracking. <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful being around politicians when, when that kind of kicks in. But um, no, I, it's it's all it is is common sense. This MacGyver um, syndrome, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, it's practical. Um, I, it, you know, these, most stuff is easy to solve, um, and it, even if you don't have the materials to do to uh, to do so. Um, that's all I can say on that matter. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, you, yeah I, think, I think you might garner this uh, answer pretty well. <laughs> you know, exactly. well, there was quite an iconic aspect of her, the character of MacGyver, which was the hair, you know, which is still universally sometimes called the MacGyver, but there's an exception uh, in Czech Republic we call it differently, but we still we, we still consider this to be the hero haircut. Uh, <laughs> is, is this is the first example, the second yeah, this is the second example why we call it the hero haircut. Oh! And the <laughs> Out there, just you know, no money and kind of 
exploring and mostly San Francisco and that general vicinity. But we've gone for most of the summer and we all decided um, to dye our hair like blonde dish. <laughs> what, you look shocked. <laughs> yeah, it's not what usually guys in Czech Republic do for fun. <laughs> well, when they're, you know, 16 years old and hopping freights, you're pretty much going to do anything <laughs> at that point. Anyway, the point being, we got back to uh, Minnesota and people mentioned and kind of commented on how blonde we look. We're also just dark from the sun and stuff. That was natural. <laughs> but uh, no, we were totally busted because we, each of us, independent of each other, said, oh, the sun did it. <laughs> this is all oh, the sun and oh, and the salt in the ocean. It turned me blonde with roots. <laughs> So again, absolutely natural in, in the Macaulay story of science. No, there were a couple. Oh, are there kids here? Can I say? Mama, can you give me a No, no, no. It's just one word. Um, when I uh, started out doing the guy, Henry Winkler, you all know, um, was my boss, basically. He's yeah. one of the executive producers. But after a couple of episodes, and there was a screen test prior to that, Henry came to set, took me aside, and said, uh, would you mind putting some, like, uh, highlights in your hair? Because, you know, I, all I had was brown. It was brown hair. And uh, he said, you know, the camera's not being too kind to you. Well, let me, let me put it this way. You look like shit on a stick. <laughs> you bring the kids up. Uh, this is a, still a good word in chat for, for kids. It's a good. Uh, in, in 2012, you returned. Uh, to your role of MacGyver for a little bit for the Super Bowl commercial with, with Mercedes, which was like 12 minutes or something like that. But I was wondering, is there any chance you might be, you know, returning back to, to MacGyver uh, now? Like, to, to see him solve, you know, find workarounds around uh, being of a, of a certain age and, uh, yeah, like senior MacGyver. I've actually given that some thought. <laughs> um, and the projections I've made about recreating the role in modern day, first of all, um, it would be funny just to watch an old man trying to do what MacGyver did. <laughs> because what MacGyver did caused me to be an old man. <laughs> but, uh, uh, part? Uh, um, I don't think a guy like MacGyver would be necessary in this day and age because, first of all, why didn't MacGyver ever carry a cell phone? Come on, anybody? No? There's so much technology this, today that um, it just wouldn't make sense. At all. Well, not that it made sense then either. Because <laughs> there may not have been telephones back in MacGyver's day, but um, I would love the opportunity to uh, play MacGyver as, as my real age, which is old, and um, I think it would be funny. Mm -hmm. I think it would be uh, kind of a, well, it would be a comedy instead of whatever it was. <laughs> uh, would anyone watch that? Like kind of a bridging question 
her another theme. Would you rather spend your free time with O'Neill or MacGyver? <laughs> um, what? <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a question from the, from the audience. Uh, who would you rather spend your free time with? O'Neill or MacGyver? Oh, oh. Um, would I want to spend my time with? With whom would I want to spend my time with? I don't know. Um, of course, I want to say a combination of the two, but that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to spend any more time with me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, O'Neill seemed to lean a little more toward me with, you know, with his, I mean, except that he was a military guy, which I respect, but there's no way. I could do that. <laughs> First of all, it's going to be a, a running theme. Um, I don't know. I, I, wasn't uh, MacGyver kind of boring? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, he had greater opportunity to be, because he was military. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think from the sense of humor, maybe only you. Mm -hmm. Although Angus, <laughs> don't forget, and the other name Angus. <laughs> well, Stargate was extremely huge in, in Czech Republic. Máme tady rád někdo z nich, bravo někdo. Does anybody want? Even it, it was possible to watch it with your parents and, and not feel embarrassed for the most time. And, and it was that one wonderful hour when, when no one would argue. They would just be watching, you know, the star game. So that, but there, and there are multiple generations now that grew up on it because it's been on Czech TV for like 20 years, you know, basically non-stop. So that's, that's probably... It is still on. Now it's on two channels simultaneously. <laughs> yeah, and there's even a joke that like Hussein Bolt, that sprint, uh, sprint runner, you know, the world war record sprinter. Yeah, yeah that uh, they asked him why he was so fast in running, and he said, like, you know, the school ended at 40, 40, 40 hours, and I lived across the town, and the starting was on from 40 to 45. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you know this, but you might have even possibly influenced our presidential vote. Uh, <laughs> Which one? Which one? Which one? Uh, the good side. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, because as it happens, one of the candidates was a real-life general. Uh, he met his wife at uh, the military. And yeah, it, maybe that sounds similar. We have a photo.
Do you have any idea why Stargate stands out so much? Because Star Trek or Battlestar Galactica or any other sci-fi shows of, of this era were never this big in Czech Republic. What? No. No. What, what, what is different in Stargate? Uh, well, besides you, of course. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs>
voice of rape today for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff in the Well, I am complaining 
Um, but it's okay, and it's life, and then it goes on. And some mad naked man standing in the window just saying, go home. <laughs> Doesn't have an effect at all. <laughs> Thank you, enter into the pride. a to je na postavu Čeka Oumila, když šlo vlastně o brigadního generála, jako vlastně měl pracovní smlouvu. collecting of lobster 
bugs, we call it, in the States. What do you call them here? Lobster? We don't have those. <laughs> have you heard of the ocean? <laughs> there are several of those around. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so that's the answer to your question. <laughs>
in Washington, D.C. to go to this uh, event to receive my honorary generalship. There were like real generals <laughs> who were retiring or being honored. So I was kind of like sort of the opening act. And then they got me in the wings and got down to the real show. But um, in my mind, I, I, I rule the world. <laughs> you know, at least some part of the Air Force. Does this mean that you would have to go to war if there was one? Damn straight, woman. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the light out of my eyes to see a glint off your chest. Um, I'm sorry, it's Navy uniform. Like That's fine. <laughs> Navy? Really? Yeah. Which Navy? The U.S. Navy. <laughs> no. Really? Yeah. Aren't you a little away from home here? <laughs> Are you retired? Yes, of course. I'm going to finish church. I'm going to finish church. Thank you for your service, seriously. <laughs> it's the strangest American accent I've ever had. I'm hoping he joined because it's not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha yelled at you, how come you cannot 
So the situation when you spent so much years uh, on uh, MacGyver. So my question is, was that a real surprise to you, or is that kind of set up? Well, uh, I don't recall. <laughs> I just know that um, well, I grew up in improvisational theater. I mean, I was more in groups like that than I was taking formal acting lessons. So um, I was always open to you know, anything happening and maybe being able to react to it or not, whatever is funnier, <laughs> I think. But, um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> no. Um, what was it? Yeah, I was going to my question was about the blooper, where Samantha yelled at you about the MacGyver ring. See, two characters. Confusion. <laughs> uh, what about? <laughs> if, if that was a real surprise, there if were... you didn't expect that. Because we have all seen the video, I'm just wondering if that was a real thing. Uh, no, they, they played a trick on me, dang it. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I think it was improvised. And she, Amanda is such a professional that she may have cleared it with uh, one of the writers or, or Brad Wright. Um, but it, uh, when she said it, I didn't break. I stayed in the, in the scene. And I think uh, in the first take, I just did a very, cause she was in, wasn't she in my arm? Kind of, like, weren't we trying to stay warm? I don't think so. Uh, like, like, <laughs> you're lying on the ice, yeah. yeah, and trying to break it, I think. Find out the VHD. We thing. weren't hugging, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Or later>? <laughs> <laughs> well, at which time, when, later, when we're trying to stay warm and we're hugging, I think, I, no, yeah, what? Well, I, I said there was a silence and we're hugging and shivering. And there was a pause. And I said, it's my revolver, I promise. <laughs> Go find a really good makeup artist and have them do an aging 
process on you. It allows, well, let me speak for myself. It allowed me to walk around the set and uh, flirt. <laughs> Rampantly flirt with anybody that had, um, uh, like attempting to, to pinch butts and, and missing. So, <laughs> It was just so, I mean, it was a different character. Um, I mean, it had to be O'Neill during uh, the filming, but afterwards, or, or between shots, oh, I was just a naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Except that uh, I realized that he was right. 
and I didn't have to go to the next table read and see the reactions of the writers. I knew that that it was it was wrong what I was doing. You know, I can do what I I do later, like in a, in a more appropriate setting, like the set in front of a camera, wasting time like that. Uh, but um, yeah, I changed my ways because of that moment. I, he was totally right. I was totally busted and wrong. So that's what was your question? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think you got a serious answer. Tony, Tony Amendola warned us that you are capable of those. If we push enough, that you are capable of being serious. Uh, <laughs> there's one last question from the app, uh, and it comes back a bit to, to your MacGyver character. If you have a Swiss Army knife, and if you do, which tool do you find the most useful? Well, in the old days, the corkscrew, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are far gone. Um, well, I don't know. What? Let's take a poll. Oh, anybody? You got a favorite? No, I like the big blade. I gotta be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It, it does, historically, it does the most good for mankind and uh, for the evolution of the human race. <laughs> like we got rid of the weaker members of the herd? Or <laughs> more likely to be able to slice your donut in half. <laughs> Oh, 